They say that three is the magic number, but you know what, when it comes to things like stab wounds and potentially bloated movie franchises, maybe enough is enough and it's not worth hitting that trilogy if it looks to derail the whole experience. However, Hollywood just loves milking ideas dry, so of course we've seen countless times where once beloved movies have had their reputations tarnished by watered down experiences who just claim to be as good as the originals. They're not. But you know what, the films on this list are a bit of a different breed, because these are films that maybe stumbled at first but were put right by their sequels, to the point where the follow-up was as good as this franchise was ever going to get, before then deciding to tumble down a cliff in a disappointing third act. So let's take a look at the films that tried, succeeded, and then failed hard. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 film franchises you really should stop watching after the second movie. Number 10, Cloverfield. The original Cloverfield, directed by Matt Reeves, is a fun and energetic monster movie and it is easy to see why many were drawn in by its great visuals and mystery that surrounded the creature. And while a sequel was rumoured for a long time after the original release, it seemed that nothing was truly coming to fruition and the franchise lay dormant for years. Then in 2015, seemingly out of nowhere, a trailer emerged for 10 Cloverfield Lane, a follow-up that no one knew was happening. And you know what? It turned out pretty well. It's an entire different film tonally, but one that's held together by some truly remarkable performances. And thanks to all these eyes and ears being on the franchise again, we all started to hope that we would get to see more. And we did, and then we wished we hadn't, because The Cloverville Paradox was immediately cited as the weakest entry in the series thanks to its poor acting, nonsensical script, and awkward attempts to fit into the larger Cloverfield universe. In fact, the marketing technique used to sell the movie was far more interesting than the movie itself. And that is just sad when you realise it. So just stick with the first two. Number 9. Scream There's no disputing that Wes Craven reinvented the horror genre many times over throughout his career. From the self-parody of Wes Craven's new nightmare to the fun meta style of Scream, he truly was a master of horror. And the latter also happens to be one of the finest slashes ever to grace the big screen. It has everything gore, wit, and a great cast working with an amazing screenplay. It was, in short, the perfect storm. And you know what? Scream 2 held up really well despite the weight of expectations on that film. It's a shame then that this wasn't translated to the third movie in the series as Scream 3 suffers in multiple ways by trying too hard to be the big, ultimate climax to the first two movies, while simultaneously becoming what they parodied. And while Scream 4 was much, much, much better, it might be too much of an ask to get through 3 for some, so we say slash your losses and leave it at 2. Number 8. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man Trilogy Sam Raimi's Spider-Man kickstarted the superhero genre in the early 2000s with its fun action, great cast, and solid script. It is not hard to see why it was such a hit, and after its release, a sequel was pretty inevitable. And you know what? Spider-Man 2 in many ways exceeded its original. In fact, many still regard Spider-Man 2 as one of the greatest superhero movies ever made, as it took everything solid about the first installment and improved upon it. In short, it was the perfect sequel. And of course, fans were beside themselves with excitement when another sequel was announced, but when it dropped, oh boy. Now there are many tales to be told about the disaster of Spider-Man 3, so I won't tread worn trench-like arguments, but yes, if you love Spider-Man, then just web-sling the third installment into a pond or bin and revel in the glory that is Spider-Man 2. Number 7. Jurassic Park Dinosaurs never get old, but the franchises that they're shoved into certainly do, and unfortunately the Jurassic Park series is one that has truly run its course. The original was like Golden Amber, the sequel eh, it was okay, not great, but not horrid, but the third film, my god, well to quote Ian Malcolm, that is one big pile of sh and things got even more distant from the original's message with Jurassic World and its sequel. Gone were the animatronics and character quirks, and in their place was just Fast and Furious Dino Edition, which in itself is no bad thing, it's just never ever going to come close to the original's greatness. Number 6. The Godfather 
Much like Jurassic Park, the original Godfather is considered to be one of the greatest movies, and say it with me kids, of all time, and was always going to be a hard act to follow. But you know what, Godfather 2 absolutely smashed it out of the park, so much so that it became the first sequel to ever win the Academy Award for Best Picture. Now these two movies are classics and remain the gold standard for gangster narratives in cinema, and of course expectations were high for part three. And although the third film wasn't panned by critics, the response was far more lukewarm than its predecessors. Many pointed to the confused tone and stilted performances, especially that of Sofia Coppola, the director's daughter, and as such it's hard not to see this final film as kind of disappointing. Now it could have been far worse, that is for sure, but it always seems to elicit a groan around the world when it comes on in the movie marathons that you and your friends might run. Number 5. Blade. Now let's be clear, the first two Blade movies aren't exactly cinematic masterpieces, what with their schlocky dialogue and so-so performances, but you know what? They are 100% bloody fun. With Guillermo del Toro in the directing chair for Blade 2, it is the obvious standout film from the franchise, and it's easy to be sucked into the engrossing atmosphere and exciting action of the director's efforts. The quality of these movies unfortunately plummeted straight off a bloody cliff with the release of Blade Trinity. Tensions between Wesley Snipes and both the producers and director meant that the movie had an incredibly troubled production. This resulted in Trinity being far more incoherent than its predecessors, and thanks to botches and hasty cuts, it also resulted in a very amusing pair of CGI's, but for all the wrong reasons. So at best, I'd say watch that scene, but skip everything else. Number 4. The Matrix One of the most influential action movies in recent memory, The Matrix was bound to become a franchise. It had incredible action, innovative special effects, weighty themes, and fantastic performances. And while the sequel showed a noticeable drop-off in terms of quality, it still possessed many of the key traits that made the first so enjoyable. The fantastic action is back, along with groundbreaking special effects. But then along came The Matrix Revolutions, which now placed way too much weight on its CG leaving the narrative feeling at once bare bones and completely padded at the same time with nonsensical guff. And thanks to this, the characters that we'd come to love were suffering greatly. While the final film ties up the main plot in a serviceable way, it does so in such an unspectacular fashion. In fact, it's so cheesy and bland that I actually prefer the giant Agent Smith robot fight that you got from the video games over this as a true closer. Number 3. The Star Wars Sequel Trilogy Okay, admittedly these movies aren't exactly the first entries into this decades-long franchise, but each trilogy can be viewed in isolation away from every other movie in the series, so we're going to twist the rules a little bit. And while I know that this opinion will probably get a lot of hate, the sequel trilogy is such a mixed bag that you can genuinely end your experiences with Return of the Jedi and have a truly great piece of cinema. If I were to break down the reasons why to avoid these three films, it probably would take way too long for a list like this, but basically, we've seen it all before, this is a comedy film, and the final one was basically just okay so I guess we're just pandering to the fan base and getting out of here. It was a series that was meant to breathe new life into the franchise, but has only ended up dividing its fan base even further, so why not dial back the clock to when all that we had to worry about was Jar Jar Binks. Actually with that in mind, why not bin off the prequel trilogy as well? Number 2. Alien Alien 3 originally had a dog in a xenomorph suit. That was its main antagonist, and you know what, I'd have rather have seen that film than the one that we actually bloody got. Alien 3 has one good scene, and that's when Ripley dies. It is a smorgasbord of issues that range from an incoherent script, a complete shift in tone, and studio meddling from day one. It was never destined to succeed, so why do this film any favours? Bin it off and enjoy two of arguably the most perfect horror sci-fi films ever made. The original is a masterpiece of suspense and atmosphere, and the sequel adds high octane action into this mix that sees the entire franchise turn to jet fuel. So to then have Alien 3 come along, kill central characters and expect us to fall in love with some dingy ass prison setting, well that felt like a slap to the face hugger to me. Hard pass. 
And number one, Terminator. No other series has suffered the same continued decline in quality more than the poor Terminator franchise. What started out as one of the greatest action franchises has devolved into basically a parody of itself. The original two James Cameron movies are action spectacles like no other. Both are expertly directed and have proven to be immensely influential for future generations of filmmakers. The T-800 is so ingrained into pop culture because of how expertly this villain turned hero was crafted and it is easily the defining role of Arnold Schwarzenegger's career. But after the departure of Cameron, the series has been steadily going downhill. The first attempt without him, Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, plays out like a tired retread of the second, except with the addition of unwanted comedy. Great. Terminator Salvation tried something new but wasn't able to match the quality of the original two movies at all, and you know what? The less said about the farcical Terminator giant ice ice, the better. And finally, the latest installment, Terminator Dark Fate, which, although being miles better than the other sequels I just mentioned, proves that this series is officially out of gas. Even with Cameron returning as a writer, the Terminator simply wasn't able to rise from the ashes again, and instead, it is heading back to the molten steel and this time it's doing a thumbs down.